Welcome back and thanks for joining us. Today I'm going to show you how to add a feature collection to your Mapbox map. Welcome back to our simple Mapbox tutorial. If you watched the last video, we took data from Soda, which is an API that gives us a response from an Ajax call and gives us open data. Today what we're doing is we're taking that open data and we're coding for more than one entity or basically trying to not have to hard code those elements into our script. And what we're using is a feature collection. It's a GeoJSON property that Mapbox uses uses to store information. In a lot of the Mapbox tutorials, you're going to see that they hard code it in there. I'm going to put an example of it in our code so that way you can see what a hard coded example looks like and what an example looks like when we take our data from an API call and run it through a for loop to give us our own array of data. Lastly, I'm going to run through a quick overview of how you would use turf.js to do some basic spatial analysis on the data that we're loading. Okay, so this is all the same stuff that we had last time. If you look up in here, this is going to be, uh, we're adding these scripts and what we added this time is this line right here. We have our turf.js plugin, which basically allows us to do some basic spatial analysis at the end. I'm gonna show you how we added that. Uh, we have our same stuff, same map area, same map token, um, except a new part of this, and I'll show you right now, I'll walk you through this, is in order to create the array, so that way I don't have to hard code in that pet data that we called in last time, I wanted to create where it just populates it by itself. So when it calls it, it puts it into the array and populates it. Now the challenge is that when it's being called, it's in its own format and there's additional brackets and it's not labeled correctly. And when we pull it into our Mapbox code, there is a bit of a challenge because we have to make it look the same so that Mapbox reading that GeoJSON can understand what's going on. So that's what this is for right here. We're actually creating an empty feature collection so that way we can run that data and then fix it and then put it into our own array instead of just using the array that comes from the soda call and just having to use it hard coded. We don't want to do that. Now what we've done is created our array that we're going to fill with data and this is what's going to hold our formatted data. This is our pet data array. And same as last time, we have our call right here just for our reference. I'm going to be logging the raw data so that way I can show you over here in the console what that looks like when we finally run our code. And if you look at it, you see there's these additional brackets. You can see that it's basically a lot of extra information that's not quite formatted correctly. Even if you look at the location, even if you look at location right here, latitude and longitude are located within this portion of the location array, which they're not their own attributes, which is very difficult to deal with. So we're gonna fix that. And the way we do that is by turning map data, the array that we created up here, into a feature collection. So what we've done now is if you can see as I'm as I've parsed through it, I have now created a type variable and have given it feature collection. So now it's got this attribute right here, type feature collection, which is going to match what we can read within uh, GeoJSON that actually gives us a feature collection. So now we've taken our array and now it's called a feature collection. So think about it like a basket and you call it groceries, but then within the basket you have, what is grocery number one? Grocery number one is a tomato. Grocery number two is a cabbage. Think of it like that, where feature collection is just, what is this a collection of? And then individual features make up a feature collection, but it's all being stored as one array. And so now what I've done is I've essentially taken it and formatted it so we have a type, it's a feature, and now we have properties, and then within that I give it name, ID, address. Basically what I'm trying to do is take the data as it comes and format it to look the way that I want it to for each instance. So that's why we're using a for loop. So for every time that we have a new line, a new item, we're gonna do this. So what I've done here is I basically have taken the properties, set it to name, name, animal ID. It's not pretty, but it'll work for now. Address, and there's, there's a location in there. There's an address where you can go find wherever this pet's gonna be uh, located. And then finally, we're gonna take the geometry, we're setting the type to point, and then we're using the coordinates that we set up here that get refreshed every time there's a new uh, 
they get refreshed every time our array runs when there's a new feature. And so it gets refreshed every time this for loop runs, and that's what we want it to do. So essentially what we end up here at the end is map data now has features that fit this description. So now what we end up with is we are pushing this info from pet data to our formatted array, map data, where all the lines of data that come through that call, whether it be 10, 5, 1, they all get formatted like this, and now our map data is equal to pet data, and then we go ahead and log this so that way we can see what the changes are that we've actually made, and they appear over here when we run the code. So if you can see, there's actually a big difference in the way that these are, way that these are lined up. What we've done now is created a feature collection, and then we had features, feature, feature number, feature zero, which is our first feature, and now we have our geometry, it's a point, coordinates, and it gives it the array, and then we have the properties that we are given and that we've called it to produce. We basically just cleaned up the call that we're getting, but we're not having to hard code it. That's what comes next, and I'll show you what map, the Mapbox tutorial that I was running through uses. What I went and did was another open data solution that the City of Austin provides is the location of off-leash areas for your pets, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, no, not the whole city. Looking at you dog moms and cat dads. And so what I went ahead and did was you can find that same data set here. I downloaded it and just quickly converted it to a feature collection, and as you can see, it's hard coded in here with all the addresses and it's basically just a raw HTML that's pasted in. That's pretty cool, but we're not going for beautiful, we're going for effective. So now what we're doing is we're adding these layers to our map. And so we set an ID, it's called pets, we symbol, um, we tell us GeoJSON, we tell where it's getting that data, map data, that's the array that we formatted. And now what we're doing is we basically added these styles to make it look like a little dog park 15. It's a little picture of a puppy. You can get more styles from here. There's a ton of resources and I'll post the link to that later. Next, what we're doing is we're adding the off leash areas. So here's our ID off leash and we gave it data from the ATX off leash area, which we created up here. We just created a constant and that constant is a feature collection. So it's a second feature collection and we edited it, gave it a little style, made it look pretty. I think it's a little tree. Now what we did is we are going to, this is a pop-up, just a basic pop-up. You can find this on any Mapbox tutorial, really. Essentially, we made it a little bit prettier by saying, basically, we're going to add the description of the dog off-leash areas and just show what that is. So if you can see over here, it just shows the address of where these are and where you can have your dog off the leash. That's a nice little one using the mouse move, so you actually don't have to click it. You can just hover over it and it pops it up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the turf JS part, which is the basic, um, we're going to do some basic analysis and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to follow a map box tutorial that is going to allow us to find a lost pet, load it in, and then we want to find the nearest off leash area to where this lost pet was found. So say for instance, your dog runs away, somebody finds it, log it as a lost animal, then what you could do is you could press on or click on that lost pet and see potentially the nearest part to where it came from that's an off-leash area. And that's all we're going to do. You can do a lot more with turf.js. If you haven't messed with it, I encourage you to go read some of the documentation. That's going to be in the link in the description. But what we're going to do is right here, as soon as you click it, basically what we're going to do is find the feature that is a pet feature, which is the like we set up our array to be feature collection and features. So once somebody clicks on that particular feature, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the nearest off leashed area to the lost pet. So nearest off turf dot nearest pet feature, which is that the lost pet from the feature collection we created to off leash area. And then if there's one not found, we return early. That's a little map box um, addition. So that way it's not just running in the background and you don't get anything. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to update the nearest off leash area data source to include the nearest off leash area. So now what basically we're doing is creating a feature collection within Mapbox, within this on click action that then says, okay, if these locations are the nearest, add them to a feature collection so that way we can style them and then display them in real time. And that's what we do right here is say, basically we do is we take the nearest off feature collection that we're creating and what we're gonna do is then add just a little circle around it so that way we can see where the nearest one is visually. And so I'm gonna go into the code and show you what that looks like. 
here are all of the off-leash areas and this data actually has polygon data so that's something we're probably going to do later on is show you how to load in polygon data right now we've just done point data but if you want to get more complex feature collections also have point line and polygon features so we just say type point type polygon type whatever line you get the picture so now what i can do is i come over here to our lost pet i can click on it and it then highlights oh and that basically is the off leash area that's closest to this lost pet and so we did that all from just loading in data that was publicly available. I hope that this video, you can see what Mapbox, things like Turf.js, and things like Open Data can do. It's a really powerful tool that you can use to your advantage. I put this together relatively quickly in just using what's at your disposal already. You have access to JavaScript, you have access to Mapbox, you have access to a library like Turf.js, and you have access to open data, so you can use it. Have you built any applications with open data? I was really enjoying this project and I'm gonna continue with it. We're gonna have some different videos coming up, but what I'd like to hear about is your experience building GIS or geospatial applications with open data. Let me know about them in the comments. I would love to hear about them. As always, thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial has helped you add feature collections to your Mapbox map, or if you're looking to run analysis, I hope it's given you a peek into what kind of analysis you can do with Mapbox. As always, remember to subscribe and like these videos, and remember to subscribe to my blog. There's a link in the description. That'll keep you up to date on all of the latest tools and things that I'm using in order to get these videos prepared for you. Also remember to follow me on Instagram at Maptical. That's where you're going to get to see how the videos get made. I've had a really great conversation with several of y'all on there. It's a great place to connect and to build community. And before I forget, these are the freebies that I have. So the first tool that I wanted to show you is going to be the turf.js documentation. It's super easy to read. Be sure you go and read that. And the other thing I wanted to show you is a GeoJSON viewer and validator. It's a really cool application that allows you to paste in your GeoJSON and it basically, it comes through it and looks to see if you have any brackets that are out of place or if you have anything that it's not really reading or understanding. It's really helpful for me because most of the time I was looking at a feature collection that was validated and one that wasn't on two different screens and trying to figure out, okay, where am I wrong? What's up here? And this tool actually allowed me to just paste in what I was working with and it would just highlight a line and say, hey, line five, you don't have the data type. I was like, okay, well then I can go and fix that. Really cool, really simple, super easy. And so I'm also going to link to the GitHub page where I found all those map icons. It's a really great reference to have, especially if you're building a map on the fly and don't really want to like have this whole library or load PNGs or SGVs. You just want to copy and paste a little style JavaScript tag and go. This is the way you want to go. I'm going to put a link to it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your time and have a great one.